With me, it all started in a Pentecostal church, y'all. My adopted mom had us in the church every time the door swung open, it felt like. Mondays, choir rehearsals, Tuesdays, Bible study, Thursday night for prayer for the community, Saturdays sometimes for community outreaches, and on Sundays for Sunday service. Now, it was an option for us to go. She didn't just drag us in. She more so wanted us to go on our own free will and learn of God because we wanted to, not because we were made to. When we started going, I was about 12 years old. Really, the only thing on my mind around that time heavy was girlfriends, video games, clothes, and shoes. All the jumping, shouting, and running through the aisles that everyone did, it never moved me really. In my mind, I was too busy trying to figure out how was, how was everybody doing these dances and catching this spirit except for me. How they doing it, you know? I started to think what many may have thought, like, hey, maybe I have sinned too much or maybe God isn't ready to accept me or maybe these people put in more work than I did and they have elevated to this dance status. To get this spirit, it became almost a challenge to me, y'all. I would go to church like, okay, Today, I'm going to open up my mind and I'm going to open up my spirit. And I'm going to catch whatever everybody else been catching up in this church. I would try to remain calm, think about God, all the pastor just said, and I would simply wait for the spirit to take over my body so that I could dance like everybody else. The thing is, it never happened in that way. But one day, after going to church for about a year, I went home, went to my room, and I said out loud, God, I might can't praise you like those people up in that church. All right. I've been waiting on the spirit to enter, but for now, I'm going to praise you the way I know how. And at this time, I was learning how to rap, just coming into learning how to rap. So I remember putting a pen to paper and writing a few lines for God. I repeated those lines over and over until I felt the love come over me so strong that I literally jumped in my room, started jumping with my eyes filled with tears, rejoicing towards God. This only lasted for a few minutes. Once I came down from my spiritual high, so to speak, I remember thinking in my mind, I got it. I know how they get it now. I can't wait to go back to church and join in with everybody else with the jumping and the shouting. And in the middle of me rejoicing on the fact that I got it, God spoke to me at the tender age of 12. He said these simple words, son, what you just experienced is not what you've been seeing. And son, I pour myself into those who really seek me and who really want me and who really love me. And son, are you sure you were actually in the church? These were the words that he said. At this time, I had little knowledge of the Bible and God. So I took these sayings and held them close. Didn't really understand what he was saying. This was one of the first times that I could say that the Lord spoke to me. And if I can explain it to you guys, it basically felt the same way that it feels to this day. When God speaks to me, he speaks to my heart and my mind at the same time, instantaneously. And when he speaks, all my original thoughts are pushed to the side because when he speaks, all else ceases. And to the other believers out there, you all can probably agree with me when I say, the more we walk in the faith, the more we will be able to distinguish God's voice. A personal relationship is the catalyst of hearing God's voice. Now, when I got back to the church this time, I took a pen and a pad and all I wanted to hear was the word. The choir and the music was all right, but I wanted to hear more about my God. I heard sermon after sermon and jotted down note after note. I would also sit in the very back of the church so that I could be in my zone. I was in a church, but in my zone. And as I sat listening to a sermon one day, scriptures just started flashing through my head some that i've read before and some i didn't remember reading at the time for example as i watched the pastor one day scriptures like to whom much is given much is required flashed in my mind another was for many are called but few are chosen that same day in the parking lot of the church i stumbled upon a group of members of the church huddled up bashing and talking ill about the pastor 
talking about him in a bad manner and instantly the scriptures came back to my mind. To whom much is given, much is required. I didn't notice it at the time. But from that day forward, God has been teaching me his word, but using my everyday life experiences. Through grade school, I continued to attend church, not as much because, you know, now I have my own vehicle and being young, I chose other places over the church a lot of the times. But I still had a love for God. It's not until I ended up locked up facing time in Atlanta, Georgia, later in my life that God showed me something real important about the walk of salvation. He said, I call it a walk of salvation because I want you to pace yourself. He said, you are my soldier. I may need you for 20 years or more. So I need you to pace yourself so you don't get burnt out in this journey, a.k.a. this war. He also said that he would show me the difference between a true believer and a lukewarm one. He states that he is not interested in shortcut Christians or the lukewarm. You see... He lives in you. Shortcut Christians and lukewarm fall in the same category. First off, faith has to be exercised. The same way a warrior goes through training, your faith has to be exercised. God's strongest warriors in these last days have gone through extensive exercising of faith. God wants to pour so much of himself into us that when he is done, our free will is now his will. See, that's the tricky part. God gave us free will, but the main objective is to give up your free will to become his will. Many times in the word, God says we can only serve one God. We cannot have two masters. So why do we continuously intertwine with the world when God says, come ye out from among the world and I will receive you? Everything the light touches. What about that shadowy place? That's beyond all borders. You must never go there, Simba. But I thought a king can do whatever he wants. Oh, there's more to being king than getting your way all the time. See, one of the first steps in this walk is changing those you associate with. Changing and modifying your circle that you engage in. A wise man once said, if you tell me who your friends are, I will then tell you your future. He was dead on point with that phrase, y'all. I heard a rich man once say, I surround myself with rich people because they will not take from me and they will show me how to get richer. Same thing in the faith. Remove those who will hinder you and surround yourself with those thirsting for God as you are. Not only will you have people around you who understand what you are soon to face, but you can also be there to support them in their time of need in this spiritual walk. Another important part of the walk is being honest, no matter how much it hurts. If you are honest with the problem, God will be just as honest with your solution. Also, be prepared for God not to work on your timetable with things, because the way he works, it usually catches us off guard when he shows up. If we agree that in all things God must get glory, then we must also learn that God likes to work with the unexpected. He likes to create outcomes for his soldiers that no other person walking the earth can take credit for. Same reason he gave Moses a staff instead of a sword. He wanted to show him that the power comes from him only. And it is not the strength of man that moves mountains, but by God's power through faith only. What if I told you that every device you have been given from your TV down to your iPad has been for distraction? Yes, they may make communication a little bit easier in this time period, but we can definitely live without all of this stuff. It is not needed for humans to survive. Making all that noise. Call yourself back talking to me? Huh? You don't act towards your man? We're going to drop some Jews today, y'all. Yes, we are using YouTube and devices to interact with each other right now. But if it was up to me, we'll be around campfires in the woods, y'all, away from internet slash electronic detection, talking about the word of God. We live in a world today where the warlocks and witches have a vendetta against God and they have set up a pyramid system to keep everyone away from God. For example, when you are born, you are signed over as a slave to the queen when you go to school you pledge to a flag while in school you can pledge to secret groups while in college you can pledge to sororities and fraternities and so on all this pledging going on and no one willing to pledge to the word of god i find that strange 
You can ask most grown men what the state of the world is like. Just ask them. They won't have a single clue what you're talking about. But if you ask them who is better out of LeBron or Jordan, they'll talk for hours on end on that subject, rarely taking breaths in between their soliloquies. The Brown Bomber. Now that was a great boxer. Damn right. I suppose nobody in here ever heard of Cassius Clay. This world is spiritually dead, man. We live in a world where if you talk about God in the rarest form, you are instantly labeled as a cult because no one wants to be told they need to correct their lives in order to live. They only want to be magnified for the minor accomplishments they have in this blur of a life. It's sad. It's sad that people cry all day for solutions and for voids to be filled in their lives. And instead of dropping to their knees, they turn on their phones and ask Siri how to cope with life or Alexia on the Apple product. Alexa, does the CIA want Edward Snowden killed? Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. The world is sad, man. For example, a lot of us feed in heavy to the Christmas holiday shopping for our kids. And then when we see we can't please them as they're growing up, we wonder what the problem is. See, you're engaging with the world, but at the same time, you want to please God. It doesn't work that way. To please God, you must do what he commands. Doing these commands shows that you truly love him. To God, we are kids. No matter how old you get here on earth, you will always be a kid in his eyes. What God was dealing with me on was when a baby lift their hands to their parents to pick them up it looks just like hands lifted in worship subsequently what god is saying is when you lift your hands to him he will surely lift you up as a parent do i understand some of you all will only believe what you can see but do you know that the good lord says in second corinthians 5 and 7 to walk by faith and not by sight some of you are only loyal to whoever pays your bills some of you, if you find out your boss and the company you work for is under satanic leadership, you'll still stay because it's paying your bills. Why do we listen to a ton of videos and others on the web to find out what the word of God say? When will we take the time to read it for ourselves? On the Power of God channel, I am not here to make you drink, but rather just to show you where the water is. It is on you to be thirsty enough when you get there. I'm going to keep it real. You have to want God almost more than you want to breathe because God is the reason we breathe. Are we going to continue to follow the system, a.k.a. the world that told you we come from monkeys? Or will you follow a true and living God that took such an interest in likening us that he made us in his likeness and carefully constructed us from the dust of the ground? And it's not until he breathed himself in us that we came alive. Now, we can take this life that he has blessed us with a life that can be can be taken the very second that we're listening to this video and we can do something productive with it and we can find our purpose or we can we can forever be lost with Satan. all right a life in this life can be taken from us and it should not be taken for granted with the diseases they dump on us the average bottom feeders lives to be about 50 years old there are 365 days in a year, so 365 times 50 gives the average person around 16,000 days to get it right. If you ask me, that is more than enough grace and opportunity for all. I hope this was a blessing. Amen. Sometimes the devil allows people to live a life free of trouble because he doesn't want them turning to God. Your sin is like a jail cell except it's all nice and comfy and there doesn't seem to be any need to leave. And the door is wide open. <laughs>